Okay, this is a mushroom bucket. What we did was we went to the local department store and we bought a five gallon pail that had a lid. And um, we have another video where we inoculated some logs with mushroom mycelium in dowel form. So um, what we did was we saved some of the dowels that were really well inoculated and we produced some hardwood sawdust, filled the bucket with the sawdust of maple, poplar, and birch, mixed it all together. And we inoculated it with the mycelium about, I would say, six weeks, six to eight weeks ago. We followed some instructions we saw on YouTube, but we made some changes, and I'll tell you what they are. I'm going to turn it around here. After six weeks, it was a little dry in there. But I noticed a mushroom was starting to grow on top, and so I wet it down. And adding the moisture has, you know, made the mushrooms want a fruit. So here we have the beginnings of what looks like to be so far a successful experiment. What they tell you to do is they tell you to drill a series of holes around the bucket. And um, the reason that I didn't do that is because from what I saw, oyster mushrooms tend to grow in an upward direction. Pretend this was a log or a rotting tree in the forest. They tend to grow up, as we'll see. So I put my holes close to the bottom, maybe three, four inches from the bottom of the bucket, and I didn't drill any other holes in the bucket except for these ones up top around the rim to provide some aeration. Now when you do this, the first thing that happens is that the, as the mycelium are colonizing your, your moist sawdust, they produce this kind of discharge, which is a clear, pungent-smelling um, liquid. And we provide a drain hole here at the bottom of the bucket for that original ooze to, to come out. But it seems like once the mycelium have colonized the sawdust in the bucket completely, that ooze stops the odor goes away so we weren't sure what was going on in that process but it turned out it was a good thing it was just natural in a log you wouldn't see that ooze it'd be absorbed by the wood around it I guess but in a bucket it's got nowhere to go so you have to provide a drain hole so for a couple of weeks it was kind of a stinky mess but it's it's turned into now something it doesn't smell and we've got a colony of oyster mushrooms here starting here and eventually I suppose so I'm going to come out with this third hole over here. You have other ideas, but um, my thinking is that if you only provide the mushrooms, small places to grow, and fruit them, the bucket will last longer, i.e. you can have multiple fruitings. So what I think is going to happen is these mushrooms are going to form, they're going to use the moisture up that's within the substrate here, or whatever, the sawdust they're living on, and um, once it gets dry, they're going to stop fruiting, but... Apparently, to encourage another fruiting, you just add some more moisture to it, and the um, sawdust becomes moist again, and then there's enough moisture for the mushrooms to fruit. So, I didn't want to put a bunch of holes in it, because I didn't want to have one mass of fruiting. I, my, I'm going to experiment and see like how many multiple fruitings I can get out of this bucket. A lot of mushroom burgers probably going to come out of this bucket. And this bucket experiment, which was about two months be between uh, the beginning of the experiment and now we have results, positive results. So I'm really happy. So allow yourself a couple of months. But once it gets going, your little mushroom friends, all they need is moisture and they'll, they'll produce you some mushroom. Gray oysters seem to be very forgiving. They seem to colonize like anything really well. They, they call, they're really kind of a forgiving mushroom. They're quite vigorous. So some of the other species, shiitake and yellow oyster and some of the other mushrooms that are attractive to you do take different techniques, it seems, or, you know, the subtle things you have to learn. They're a little bit more fussy, a little bit more prone to the mycelium becoming infested when it's, you know, after it's inoculated and this and that. So I would recommend to all of you who want to learn about this to start with a common oyster mushroom blue oyster, gray oyster, whatever you want to call it. But that seems so far to us to be like the most forgiving. Two days, I guess, since the original video. And 
mushrooms have appeared and basically what's cool is they're growing really fast I mean, it doesn't look like much now but this morning this wasn't there so everybody's happy and we're gonna wait and see no one wants to grow out of this hole but there is action <laughs> there is action which is better than no action. we can't wait anymore we're gonna sample our first oyster mushroom from our bucket and we're gonna put them look at that beautiful mushroom look at that that formed in the last two days let's take these little buggers to you off here chop them up put them in our stir fry okay so we got some more coming out here show these ones show the, zoom it there's close up on this they're poking out all over mm. okay let's try a little raw bit of the mushroom see what what they think mmm oh oh it's really mushroomy try Bridget try a little piece it's got some flavor it's, it, I'd say it's not bad I'm wrong mushroom. with that yeah okay new flush from mu mushroom bucket got some nice growth oh it's clustering up there 